Greetings and welcome to TFT Tarot for Today, Divine Dabblings with Oberon and Banshee, and this is me with Goth Tarot, my weekly exploration into the shadow side of life, kind of embracing what is bugging us and maybe how we can uh, find a way through that. So I use a reading based on the Mystic Seven uh, Points of a Star, Solomon's Triangle reading. And I construct the two triangles from a series of uh, darker themed tarot cards. So for the first triangle, the ascending one, I use the Santa Muerte tarot for all the points. And we're going to get going. The first point is the dark design, so it represents the general focus or tone of the week ahead for which this reading is. And that's Wednesday the 19th until the 25th. If you hover around Twitter, you might want to wish uh, Banshee a happy birthday. Today is her birthday, April 19th. All right, so the first point on the pyramid, which I said was the focus, is the Queen of Swords. And Queen of Swords tells us that this is a week of decision making. This is a, a week where we will seek to be strongly involved in solving some problems that maybe decisions or choices will come into uh, effect for. So I think it's mostly talking about our, our good judgment skills and the fact that we really have to decide the course of maybe something that needs to uh, be put to rest in one way or the other, or that the decision actually enables uh, better actions. As a goth kind of person, this may be important. There could be actual, the idea that maybe is there some litigation involved in our lives, and so we are hoping to sit before a favorable judge if that might be the case. So then point two on the pyramid or the triangle is the dark drama, the influences of others, uh, whether they are actual reality or not, there are things that are influencing us and they're coming from external forces. And it's the lovers, Major Arcana 6. So this could be saying that once again, there is this decision, lovers is kind of like that. Maybe it could be about a relationship. And maybe there are people on the sidelines, interested parties, or people who feel they have a stake in this that they would want to uh, be influential. So mostly it looks like it's good feedback from your community or surrounding people here. Uh, hopefully that continues to be the case. But now I, I do sort of see the idea of the judgment or decision relating to a a human relationship of some sort. So then finally, the way things may most likely go forward, I call that the dark destiny. That's point three of our pyramid. And it is a reverse card. It's a reversed page of swords. So I think that there's something clumsy that may be going on in the execution of this. That may be the way it most likely ends up. There is a fall from grace or a fall from tact or diplomacy. You may find yourself to be at odds with what the drama from outside suggests or maybe what the situation is actually about. And it looks to me like maybe you're not going to really have a chance to be seen in a more honest light. So that's kind of a bummer for us. Uh, in the goth kind of community there. <clears throat> Not liking that a whole lot. Um, oh, I got to switch the pyramid around here. I forgot to do that. One moment. Uh, 
we're turning the frown upside down, except it's not a frown. So then that was the first pyramid, which I said was used Wally with the uh, Santa Muerte Tarot. So now we're going to start the second pyramid, which moves from the bottom upwards, or descending since the point is, is, is downward. And the first point is the dark shadows, the thing or things that haunt us and maybe are making it difficult for us to move on or to escape what the current situation looks like. Now, of course, I don't usually feel that it is an actual physical haunting type of entity. It's more likely something that encompasses the range of psychological fears, realistic or not. Um, but it could be actual vibrations, essences, energies that are around you that promote the idea of being trapped by this feeling or vibration, this fear. <clears throat> so let's see what that could possibly be. What does that look like? What haunts us? It's judgment reversed, and it kind of plays into all this because we were talking about decisions and judgments, possibly about uh, arrangements, arrangements between people, relationships. Blah, that's what I'm trying to say. So you go here as a pyramid. And that's pretty telling because I guess we really feel that the judgment can't help but go against us or that there is something valuable to learn or take away, but we won't be able to achieve that. It could be the results of where it was going, the idea that we've just lost so much ground in the PR department that we don't come across as an honest person or partner here. And, and so what haunts us is the idea that we have failed or will fail and that we won't really understand what we could have done to change. And so we may be liable to repeat this again, that we're stuck in a bad judgment zone. So now I want to go on to the next part of that pyramid. And for that, I use the Night Sun Tarot. And the question here is what is the dark truth? What is this reality that now maybe we understand or see here, but maybe we need something to kind of send it home, sync it up with our own sense of awareness here. What is really going on a reality that we have to accept no matter what, it doesn't mean we can't work on changing it, but as it stands right now, we have to accept that this is actually happening. That this is causing the problems, perhaps. And it's the upright king of pentacles. So, the dark reality is, is that we need to really work on managing almost every aspect of the physical mundane parts of our lives that maybe we're out of touch with how to run our lives. We can't figure out how to capitalize on decisions being made or be more influential in how the decisions are being made and we're kind of floundering here going forward, losing stamina, well, no, losing grace or losing people's favorable impressions of us. So the dark truth is we need to kind of bring it home and learn how to focus and manage our lives better. But you know what I always say, at this point, 
there's a dark twist, maybe. Something we don't expect that could possibly change everything, too. It might help, it might hinder, but we pull that card from the Black Tarot. And unlike most of these other cards, they come from the Low Scarabio uh, branch of Luan cards. This is an independent one here I like. The uh, name escapes me at the moment. But it's very black, but and then, you know, whites and grays. But um, it's easy to read. Uh, the images totally make sense. And I definitely relate to it. So what is the dark twist? What is the, the game changer? The thing that pulls out the rug? For good or ill effect. What could possibly change things at this point? And, you know, it's not always ultra dramatic. Maybe it's just something that we didn't notice, but it is a suitable game changer. So what is the dark twist? We have so many core cards here. <laughs> we really do. And this time we have the Queen of Wands. But the Queen of Wands is reversed. And so the dark twist could be saying that there's an anti-charisma going on, maybe, that maybe somebody is is going to show up and bring a really kind of different, dissonant perspective, and yet it still has a sense of being attractive in some form, you know. That's the wan energy. It may be, too, that maybe the dark twist could relate to the fact that where you're going over here the idea of losing grace in people's eyes. Maybe the dark twist is you fully embrace that and you you em embrace, you know, your lack of charisma in a sense and just plow ahead to really figure out how to take charge of this decision, how to take charge of managing things. And so that's the twist is like to to gain mastery, you really go to a very different kind of place in your own personal ethos or whatever you call that. I don't know. It sounds kind of fascinating, my goth friends. <clears throat> so let's conclude this part of the reading by showing us what our dark gift is with the Crow's Magic Tarot. It used to be our coven's tarot, and we would use it mostly for our very important readings. But as I inherited at the Coven's disbanding, I now use it for personal readings and, of course, for goth tarot. This was, whoa, don't blow away on me. This was the original deck and inspiration when I started goth tarot a couple years ago now. And so I've kept it in almost every iteration of the reading. I've changed the reading around a few times. And I'd like to mention that I'm curious about maybe possibly changing the reading again. I've been doing this for a couple months and I really like the reading, but I've been thinking of a different formation of a star with points on the star and maybe different gravities there. If you're interested in giving me advice or suggestions, I would welcome those and you could easily leave a comment here on YouTube, or if you're on our Facebook, Twitter, Instagram accounts, you could mention it there. Or failing that, you could write to us at gmail, TFT Tarot for today. That's one word at gmail.com. So without any further delay, let's give one final ripple and see what our dark gift is. That skill, hunch, insight, intuition that maybe allows us some power or advantage in our, our situation. And the dark twist is the two of coins, and it's upright. And the two of coins is, of course, balance. <clears throat> That in order to achieve these things, because it does sound like it's some wild energies going back and forth, differing peoples involved and ideas, is we really do have to focus on managing the balance um, of finding out 
how it is we can shoulder the burdens of a major decision in our relationships and yet really project mastery over what we're left with here to maybe rebuild even. It's kind of heavy. So I think this would definitely be the time to get a little shadow work in the affirmation phase. And I use the I'm going earth, to do the earth and, bone. and bone oracle set to find our shadow work for this week. I really love this deck. It's a wonderful, wonderful compliment to the cards I use here, especially uh, the opening card, the Santa Muerte. Um, oh, they're a little bit turned around. There we go. So thank you for joining me. And uh, of course, if you like these kind of things and you live in the Detroit area, we are going to be at the third annual Detroit Hoodoo Festival, which is in Southfield. Uh, that's coming up at the end of May. So uh, about a month from now, or not quite, a little over a month from now. So check out our social media. We're really excited uh, to be doing that. Uh, we've done this a couple times before, and also the Corollary Detroit, which is well. We always have a good time, meet a lot of cool folks. So what is our shadow work then? What is the affirmation that can help us process what the reading was about and maybe position ourselves for some of those things that are coming that uh, sense of a big decision kind of stuff happening, maybe changing our status quo in relationships and possibly really changing our status quo with a lot of people, you know, that maybe we had been relating to, but now there's a question about our viability in certain relationships. Well, no surprise, it's the key. Number 26. Inner calling, clarity, resolve, intention, objective. You may need to practice being present. Your messages of fulfill fulfillment are sent to you by spirit and found in the awareness of presence. You have an inner calling. Fulfilling your purpose is attained by the steps you take now. The destination is secondary and only achieved after you have completed the present steps. What action can you take now? Remember, if the means do not contribute to happiness, neither will the end. Your current state of consciousness determines whatever is manifested in the future. Inner alignment is the main objective of everyone. Being present allows you to attain inner alignment. Your goals such as career or life's work will fall into place once you are aligned. Through experience and mistakes in a trial and error environment, you can determine what your purpose is. A process of elimination determines your soul's path. Discovering what is not for you leads you to what you should be doing. Never allow fame or fortune to drive your actions. Purpose does not come from your mind and it does not come from thought. It comes from being still and allowing the universal energy to come through you. It is a feeling. When there is something new and you want to learn, simply add to the list of all the things you wish to learn and take actionable steps to learn it. If you truly love it and it comes easy to you, then you will naturally move into alignment and the universe will conspire to aid you. If not, then move on to the next thing. Just make the steps today that will propel you towards what you want to learn, what you want to see, what you want to do or become, one step at a time. Be here now. Affirmation. I trust that the universe is supporting me. I accept that everything is working out the way it should. 
And once again, that was Syrian Shadows Earth and Bone Oracle Set, which I've been using here for our shadow work for the last... So I wanted to give us one last shot of the reading and of the Earth and Bone Shadow Work Oracle. And I think being in the moment is worthy advice and to work on. We need to be able to focus on what we can manage in this question. And we have a gift of balance. We just have to figure out the best ways to use it. We have to move beyond the thoughts of what the future could bring and work on to what we are now in the moment. So I think it's very, very important here. Whatever's going on with relationships, there may be this opportunity to be a little bit, you know, ferocious. I'm just going to say, follow your heart on that one. I don't know what to tell everyone what to do with that, but I'd say follow your heart. And that's what I have for Goth Tarot this week. So I thank everybody for coming. Don't forget to watch my emotional exchanges for something a little bit lighter in tone this Friday at 7 a.m. And of course, if you really want to be happy, you can watch Happy Hour Saturdays at 10 a.m. You know what? This Saturday is the 22nd. We're going to be a little bit later. We're going to be at 3 p.m. in the afternoon. I have to work my regular job in the morning. So join us for happy hour at 3 p.m. And then Sunday, join us with Banshee's Material Matters at 10 a.m. in the morning. And of course, we'll have two live streams this week. Uh, one on Thursday night, our usual 7 to 9, and then also Sunday afternoon from 2 to 4. So thanks everybody for joining me in Goth Tarot. Enjoy your week, and we will see you soon. Bye-bye. Thank you.